All right, I've got a hot topic for you today because we are talking about Mike Bobo, Georgia's offensive coordinator. Listen, I know a lot of people out there, a lot of Georgia fans, probably some watching this video, are anti-Mike Bobo guys uh, for whatever reason, right? Maybe it goes back to 2014 against South Carolina. Maybe they've never won a national championship with him as the play caller. I, I get it. I've got a lot of friends who are just are not going to be Mike Bobo people until he uh, wins a national championship as a play caller. But dude's up for the Broyles Award. And if you forgot what that was, that goes to the best assistant coach in college football. I've got some numbers I'm going to talk about, but I'm also going to get dig, excuse me, dig into the Alabama game. What went wrong? When was he too conservative? Uh, when was he trying to get too cute? He might win that Broyles Award if he beats Alabama. Uh, but Alabama's really tough. Todd Munkin also had a tough time, you know, trying to get to that 30 mark against Alabama. But we're going to talk about all that. But my bigger question, I guess, as I pull up these numbers, is does Mike Bobo get too much grief from Georgia fans? Uh, why is Kirby and Glenn Schumann not getting a lot of heat for the defense, not making key stops in the fourth quarter? I know they were tired because there were several three and outs. I'm going to get into all that. But does Mike Bobo get too much heat? Uh, does he get enough credit also when things are good, which they have been. Georgia was eighth in total offense this year, two, uh, excuse me, 482 yards a game. They were ninth in scoring offense with 38.4 yards per game. Now, he didn't go against a string of great defenses this year, right? Um, Missouri is a strong defense, and Alabama is a strong defense. Auburn is too. Auburn had one of the better defenses Georgia saw all year. And Georgia, you know, didn't get to that 30 mark against any of those teams. So they scored a lot of points and moved the ball a lot of yards against some bad defenses this year. Um, but that's, you know, that's what you have to do. And he gets credit for putting 50 up on right, Kentucky and, and Ole Miss and, you know, beating Tennessee's brains out in Florida. He gets credit for all that. But I think even Mike Bobo will tell you that he should have done a better job against Alabama. Let's break that down real quick. So Georgia's opening drive. Touchdown, right down the field, kind of vanilla Alabama defense, but Georgia did what they did. They look great. Um, then Nick Saban makes some adjustments. He plays with the secondary a little bit, uh, told the corners to get a little physical on the receivers, uh, and they played great in the line of scrimmage, and Georgia punted. It was three and out on their second drive, a pass that lost three yards, two back incompletions, boom, they punt. They get the ball back for their third time, third drive of the game, punt again, another three and out. Dejan Edwards gets six. Then he got two. Then they lost a yard on third and one. And that was the first scenario where you're thinking, oh, I mean, th this could be a long ball game. They're not winning the line of scrimmage. I'm not blaming that call on Mike because it's third and one. You've got Dejan Edwards. That You give it to him 90, 95% of the time this season, that play is going to work because the offensive line is doing their job. They can get one yard. Uh, that's not on Mike Bobo. That's, that's Georgia losing the line of scrimmage on a third and one and you lose two. You have to punt, and that's not necessarily on Mike. The fourth possession of the game, it's a missed field goal. Solid drive of the Alabama 19, then Kendall Milton goes for no gain. Kendall Milton gets the carry again on second and 10, and he goes backwards. So now they're at third and 12, and then Carson Beck is sacked to the 26. False start, puts Georgia back on the 31. They miss the field goal. Um, is that on Mike? Is that on Mike? Uh, maybe the second down call where they lost two. I remember thinking in the press box, it's not working. I know you don't want to abandon the run. You can't abandon the run until the fourth quarter. Then they kind of started throwing it around. They were playing from behind. They scored two touchdowns on the final drive. Wasn't enough. But let's go back to, to that drive. Milton goes no gain. Then he loses two. Um, that was a questionable play call for sure. And then you, you're in a passing. You know, you're in field goal range. Then you have to pass third and 12. You get sacked. Then five more yards backwards. That was a key point in the game. And I believe that was their last drive of the first half that mattered, uh, at least. Uh, first possession in the second half, they punt, right? Golden opportunity, start the second half hot. And uh, first down, it was a pass of two yards, then seven. Then on third and one, Dijon Edwards loses a yard. So second time, and both times I think they tried to get to the perimeter, or at least off the edge, not the perimeter, off the edge. They, they were not going up the middle. And if they did and got stopped, my Bobo would be taking a lot more heat, right? Run up the middle, run up the middle. Um, people aren't going to like that. He tried to get creative with the run game. Georgia lost line of scrimmage. Um, that, that's that's all it was to it. 
they had a good feeling Georgia was going to run the ball because they've done it effectively and successfully, third and short all season long. They manned up and they made the stop twice on third and short. Mike Bobo said, I'm not going to get tricky. We're just going to run. We're going to pick up this one, two yards. Done it all year. Couldn't do it. Not sure those two calls are on Mike. That questionable second call, uh, second down call earlier uh, definitely was. Then they get a field goal. Big pass to Arian Smith uh, down to the Bama 19. Kendall Milton rush for three yards. Beck incomplete to Bowers on second and seven. And then another incompletion on third and seven. Uh, trying to throw the ball. They're in, you know, not getting a ton of rushing yards on first down. Makes things tougher for Carson Beck. Third and down situation. That's when things are tough for anyone. Alabama can get after him uh, and create some pressure. And they were able to get to him some. Um, so then they punt. Um, no, they connect on the field goal. I'm sorry. Then the next possession, uh, I think they're down seven. They're down seven. First down, after, uh, then after a false start, Georgia has uh, first and 15 from their own 17. Then Mike gets a little cute. First and 15 from your own 17. And I, I haven't gone back and watched the game. I just, you know, look these numbers up online. I'm just going by memory now. So I think it was a little cute little reverse to, to Dylan Bell. The, the fumble was, I, I don't know if it was on Carson or Dylan Bell or on both. Too cute of a play. I know you have to make something happen, uh, create some type of explosion. Um, but they had just got a first down and, and then things kind of falling apart, but you can't run that type of play. If you do, you have to execute it. I don't know if the handoff were, would have been successful, how many yards you would have gotten. Um, but you fumble, and that was one of the biggest plays of the game. Alabama didn't fumble inside their 15. Mike Bobo, the play call was questionable for sure, but he didn't fumble the handoff. He didn't <laughs> – it wasn't his fault Dejan Edwards didn't get those one or two yards. Um, so, I, yes, you can question a lot of the play calls in this game. Um, after that, they punted then two touchdowns at the end of the game. He, he made the adjustments later. Nick Saban made it after Georgia scored that first touchdown, he made those changes. Mike Boba still kind of kept the game plan up, it looked like. I'm not an offensive genius guru. I don't call plays in college football. But to me, it looked like he wanted to keep doing what they wanted to do after Saban had made the adjustments. And then they get down. They can't run the ball anymore if they want to win the game. They got to get back into this, start throwing. And that's when you know things started to gel a little more in that fourth quarter. Uh, fighting, they fought their way back. But at the end of the day, uh, Mike Bobo didn't give up the the first downs on defense. Um, that was Kirby and Glenn Schumann's defense. That they they were gassed uh, at, at that point. Now, is that on coaching too? It were they gassed or did they just weren't good enough to make the stops? Uh, didn't make the plays. Alabama made the stops they needed to defensively to win the game. Georgia didn't. Uh, they had an opportunity to get a stop, get the ball back. And in the fourth quarter, Georgia's offense was, was clicking and kind of rolling. I do think if they would have just got one more stop in that fourth quarter, got the ball back, either tied the game, maybe take the lead, um, we'd be sitting in a, a different position right now. But overall, uh, my point is that Mike Bobo is very good. He's a top 10 offensive coordinator in college football. Uh, if you disagree, I'd like to hear your list in the comment section below. Who would you rather have calling plays at the university than Mike Bobo. I'm sure you can think of some names. I'm sure there are some names. Uh, he's not the best, but I think he's probably a top 10 play caller in college football. And um, I, I, there are times when I think he gets a little too much heat. Now, if you're a college offensive coordinator, high school offensive coordinator watching this, and you can break down why he's worse than I think he is, go for it. I have no problem hearing you out. I do understand why he, his quite uh, his I want to say questionable play calling didn't really say it properly but I get why people are frustrated sometimes watching him um he does want to run the football and sometimes even when they can't run the football uh, but other times people think he abandoned the run sometimes like I think in this uh past game he stuck with the run a little too much um but I think they had a plan that could have worked. They just didn't make the adjustments that Nick Saban did, the in-game uh, adjustments. And being able to make those particular plays, those select few plays that happen in every game, Alabama made them and Georgia didn't. That was a fairly even match for most of the game. 85 90% of the game, I thought it was very even, very close. 
Alabama won that last 10% uh, and, and deserved it. But are, are you still mad at Mike Bobo? Let's hear it in the comment section. Where are you? One to 10? Are you totally cool with him? Think he can get the job done uh, maybe next year, year after that? Or is Georgia never going to? I mean, it's not all Mike. It's, I mean, he's he just, he deals with the offense, right? Uh, offensively, they were very good this year. They were not their best when it mattered most. How much is that on Mike? How much of that is on the offensive line? How much of that is on other things? Let me know. We're breaking it down. Um, thanks for watching this video. Really appreciate it. There's a free newsletter we have over on Dog Post. Sign up with that link down below. We'd love to see you on the website. Really appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next video.